Hey everyone, Austin here again with another quick play. Today we're going to be playing through Mega Man 2 for the NES. One of the all-time greats from this era. One of my absolute favorite games of all time. And, uh, yeah, we're going to roll through it today. Uh, I actually haven't played this in a little while, though, so we'll kind of see how we do. Uh, for those of you guys new to my channel, this is my quick play series where I basically fire up a game. We see what we can do with it. Uh, this is Mega Man 2, though. I uh, will most definitely get through this in one sitting. Uh, I don't usually have trouble with this game because I've been playing this since about the time it came out. I was a uh, wee lad, as the Brits would say, uh, when this game came out, and this was a big staple in my childhood. The whole Mega Man series was, honestly, growing up. Uh, Mega Man was like Castlevania and Ninja Gaiden and Super Mario Brothers to me. It was it was up there, uh, and it still is like one of my favorite series uh, to go back to, particularly the 8-bit versions. Uh, I did, you know, advance into the 16-bit era with this series, and I, I have played some of the more recent ones, but uh, classic Mega Man is where it's at for me. So yeah, this is a uh, casual video series where I, you know, I just kick back, relax, play some games. Hopefully you can kick back, relax, and enjoy some of this gameplay. Uh, but with that, let's go ahead and uh, hit select to do difficult mode. The difficult mode is actually the normal difficulty um, in the Japanese version of the game. There's only one difficulty there, so they added in an easier difficulty mode here for us. Us dumb Americans <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> let's go ahead and start with Metal Man. I think what I'm going to do today is... Um, Kill Metal Man first, uh, and try to take advantage of his weapon for most of this playthrough. Usually I just use the uh, the pea shooter or the plasma shot, uh, Mega Man standard buster, uh, but I think what I want to do is actually try to take advantage of uh, Metal Man. So, but yeah, this game just has a lot of great mechanics in it. Like even right here on this first level that we're playing, you've got these conveyor belts that constantly push you in one way or the other. And, uh, you know, there's different speed strategies to, to get through uh, those areas a little bit faster. You know, you can try to walk against them really, really slowly, but you can jump and uh, make faster progress. And, uh, you know, there weren't a lot of games uh, from this time period that uh, really, really worked with physics like that and really demonstrated physics like that. So Mega Man 2 was actually something quite special uh, when it came out. You had a couple of other games on NES that were definitely physics-based uh, and had great physics, like Super Mario Brothers was just amazing. Uh, but Mega Man was definitely on a, a completely different level uh, compared to a lot of other games on the NES. And not just the NES, but just other 8-bit platforms as well. Um, obviously, this is the second Mega Man. There was an original Mega Man that came prior to this. You guys will most likely see a quick play of that sometime this month. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the great physics kind of started in that. But Mega Man 2, I, I think, kind of uh, tightened things up just a little bit. Uh, Mega Man 1 can feel a little stiff sometimes, uh, especially when you when you need to stop and then go. Uh, Mega Man 1 is a little more stiff than Part 2, and so uh, Mega Man 2 makes things a little more snappy, which is uh, quite nice. This game still feels amazing today. It's just, again, just the way it moves and... and uh, flows is just it's just great it's amazing so there's an energy tank right there energy tanks are one-time use items that you can get and they will refill your entire health bar uh, that one down there is extremely difficult to get without a uh, special ability which i don't have right now there are three items you can get that um they're like assist items that uh will basically form platforms in front of you and so you you, you need one of those to get that energy tank reliably yeah, this is Metal Man. What I like to do with him is just sit in the back. This is a, a very easy strategy. Now, you do have to watch for the conveyor belt. Uh, you'll see the screen flash, and every time it flashes, the conveyor belt actually switches directions. So... But yeah, you can literally just sit back, and, uh, you know, I'll just jump over his metal blades. Very simple strategy. Some people like to get up close. If you get too close to him, he actually jumps to the other side of the screen. And what's really funny is that I didn't know that until... Uh, you know, sometime during my, my YouTube journey, uh, talking to people online, and, um, yeah, I've always just sat in the back. That's always been my Metal Man strategy in Mega Man 2. And you can see those physics are still in action. It pushed Mega Man all the way to the right. I have no control right now, so it's just a fun little detail. 
Lots of like animations in the background, which is just fantastic. At this time, again, not a lot of NES games were doing things like that with uh, background animations. I mean, this was, I think, 87 or 88. I think it was 88, actually. And um, it's just, a, it's an awesome looking game. They put a ton of effort into this and, and it shows. Um, so, all right, I've got uh, Metal Man's weapon. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do Flash Man next uh, because Metal Man, I think his weapon works well against Flash Man. And so we're gonna go ahead and use the boss weaknesses on this playthrough. See if we can shorten things up a little bit. Let's go ahead and hit start. Uh, again, one of the uh, the big mechanics in Mega Man is the fact that uh, you steal boss powers and then you can use them within, uh, you know, other levels. And Metal Man's is just, it's overpowered, but it's, it, in my opinion, it's overpowered in a good way. It's just so much fun to use. You can shoot it in all directions and uh, it is just insanely good. It doesn't even use up very much ammo. So if you look on the top left, if you've never played a Mega Man for some reason, um, I've got a ammo bar next to my health bar. The health bar is the white bar. That's a little bit bigger. Well, now it's a little bit smaller because these guys hit like tanks and I actually fell down the, uh, the wrong chute, unfortunately, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. Well, my ammo bar is on the left. It's the, uh, the colored one. All right, we're gonna try to fall down here. And this, this soundtrack just is, it's so grooving. It's just an amazing soundtrack. It's one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. Um, this is the kind of soundtrack, like, you could, you could let someone who's not normally into video game music listen to it, and they'd probably groove along with it. It's just, the, the music is just phenomenal in, in Mega Man 2 in particular. I mean, the series, uh, has some great music across the board, but, uh, Mega Man 2 in particular is, it's a standard that's extremely difficult to beat on this hardware in particular. Um, but all right, we're at uh, Flash Man. So he can actually freeze you and then shoot you. But we're, what we're gonna do is just use Metal Man. There we go. So when you hit bosses in this game, uh, they have invincibility frames for a few frames. So if you're mashing the attack button, uh, a bunch of your attacks are gonna actually just go through them and not register as hits. And so what I like to do in Mega Man 2 in particular, and Mega Man 1, is time my attacks so the next attack hits when the invincibility frames have wore off on the boss. So it's basically bam, 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 bam. And every time I hit, it's doing damage and their life bar is dropping. And it's uh, very satisfying being able to do that as well, timing your attacks that way and uh, making it so your, uh, you know, your attacks are efficient. It's very satisfying to me in these, these old 8-bit games in particular. Um, a lot of people I see playing games like the Mega Man titles is they're constantly mashing the fire button as fast as they can, not really realizing that it doesn't do anything because, um, you know, uh, the bosses have invincibility frames. So, you know, while those invincibility frames are active, uh, your your hits aren't going to do anything. The bullets would just go straight through them. So let's go ahead and switch back to Metal Man. <laughs> this is going to be the Metal Man run. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Normally, I just do Buster only. But, you know, for this video, we're going to do Metal Man for, for much of this. And if I feel like using some other weapons, too, maybe I will. Uh, but I haven't really announced it yet. Um, well, at least not in a uh, dedicated video form like this. Um, this month, what I'm going to be doing is I plan on doing um, primarily Mega Man content. Uh, very much like I did mostly Castlevania content during this last October. Um, this November, which is this month now as of doing this video, I'm going to be doing uh, Mega Man stuff. So you're going to see some classic uh, NES Mega Man playthroughs again. And then uh, you can probably expect some uh, some Mega Man X games I haven't done in a while. And uh, maybe I can revisit some, uh, some Game Boy Mega Man games that I haven't done before or in a while either. Yeah, so everybody uh, stay tuned for uh, lots of quick plays, just like October. Um, hopefully we can have about the same amount of quick plays, you know, try to get like two or three videos a week. Um, not trying to overwhelm myself, but thankfully these quick plays are not, it's, it's kind of low effort content, it's kind of like low hanging fruit, <laughs> if you will. Um, but they're still fun to do, and it seems like a lot of you guys enjoy them. So, you know, maybe I can crank out a bunch uh, this month, just like I did last month for October. A bunch being more than usual. <laughs> Usually I do a quick play every week. Uh, sometimes I, I don't do a quick play every week. Sometimes it's like two or three times a month. 
Um, but during October, I think I did like 12. <laughs> I did, I did a lot of quick plays. It was like two to three videos a week. And, uh, it seems like you guys, uh, really, really enjoyed those. Alright, so these, uh, these ostrich chicken things? Uh, hybrids? <laughs> um, you could just let them jump over you. It, it is possible to actually jump over them, but it's, it's very dangerous. I don't recommend it. Just let them hop over you. Alright, so this is Woodman. He's probably one of the more difficult bosses in the game if you're trying to do this without taking damage. Uh, his leaves go across the screen and they do quite a bit of damage when they touch you, so you need to be very careful with these. Alright, we've pretty much got this. You see that Metal Man does decently against them, it's like two blocks of health, but you have enough uh, window of opportunity to get, you know, probably like, you know, four hits at least, maybe a little bit more. Um, so a couple cycles basically, and then you can have him down if, you, if you're using Metal Man. Now there are other weapons that actually do more damage against him, but Metal Man's weapon is just so well-rounded that you can just use that on Woodman. Alright, stage select. Let's go to Bubble Man. I think what we're going to do is probably save Quick Man for last. Um, well, at this point, it doesn't really matter if I save Quick Man for last. I've got uh, Flash Man's weapon, which is uh, Quick Man's weakness, sort of. Uh, <laughs> uh, Quick Man, um, you can deplete half of his health bar by using Metal Man's weapon on him. But then you have to do the rest of the fight with uh, your standard pea shooter. So, it can still be tif uh, difficult. Now, these falling platforms are a little weird. If you don't jump early enough, uh, your, your jump's not going to register, and you're going to end up falling to your doom. And one, one nice thing about Mega Man is that you do have a really large health bar, and enemy damage in this game is usually pretty generous. Like, I just took two hits, but I still have, uh, you know, two-thirds of my health bar left. Even after that third hit, I still have almost two-thirds of my health bar left, so... Um, you, you, there's definitely some, uh, some flexibility in this game. Ooh, extra life, very nice. We have to hit this guy's, uh, little sensor up there. And then, uh, he goes away. I love all the, the little visual flourishes in this game. It's, it's really small details, but they make a really big difference. So, for one, you've got water physics here, um, but to indicate that you're underwater, uh, Mega Man's got these little bubbles that come out of his mouth. Just a really tiny little detail, but it, 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 it uh, sells the effect of you being underwater. Also, uh, your ceiling, you'll notice that there are some pipes that are basically shooting out, like, air. Also, kind of like, you know, Letting you know, or maybe maybe it's it, it's it's squirting out more water. I don't know. Maybe it's like feeding this this pool of water, or it's cycling the water. Who knows? Don't want to overthink it too much. But the whole thing is, it's like that visual effect, along with like the bubbles coming out of Mega Man's mouth, combined with the water physics. And look at this; these little visual flourishes right there um, help sell the effect of you being underwater. Um, and it's such a simple thing, and it's, uh, it's great. I, I, I love, uh, this era of NES, you know, the late 80s in particular, where developers, you know, they had better hardware at their disposal, better memory mappers, so they could do more with the game, but they took advantage of the fact that they could do more with the game, and, you know, added visual flourishes like that, uh, to really just sell the, um, just sell the experience, um, it's so good. I mean, even that that uh, that tiled background there, where it fades uh, at the top as it gets closer to the spikes, it's just lots of nice little attention to detail that's completely unnecessary. But it's it's just great. Like there's like little shadows outside of uh, our little menu boxes right here. You know, it's just great attention to detail, and um, you know, I think that's one reason why I'm personally really into that kind of stuff in my games, is that I grew up with stuff like this that was really polished, and I like, kind of pushed the boundaries for the time, and this basically, um, became, like, the norm for me, um, in, in what I expect from, like, high-quality video games, you know, um, I mean, if you just look at these guys, like, they have that little, uh, light, uh, between their eyes, and it blinks, it's just in the clouds, they pulsate, you know, it's, it's just, it's so good. 
<sighs> Mega Man 2 is an amazing game. Yeah, it's got some, uh, you could argue it's got some, some issues, uh, like, you know, there's a lot of screen flicker. Uh, but that was very common for 8-bit hardware back in the day. We'd, it was just something that we had to live with. And, uh, flicker, in this case, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, now, flicker can bother me, in general. Uh, let's see, a great example is, like, R-Type on the PC Engine. Uh, the flicker there is really, really bad. I mean, I still love that version of the game, but <laughs> I can totally understand some people not being into it because of the amount of flicker, especially in a game like R-Type, where it's really fast-paced. R-Type, you have a lot of objects on screen at all times, whereas Mega Man 2, you've got you, you got maybe a couple of enemies, that's it. Um, and so the flicker isn't uh, all that crazy in this because of that. But yeah, uh, some of these clouds actually obfuscate your, uh, you know, where you need to go. And what I'm doing here, actually kind of like jumping next to these spikes, I don't recommend doing that, I just do it out of habit. Uh, I remember watching, like, I think it was a tool-assisted speedrun, over, like, like 20 years ago now, it's been a really long time, um, that actually did that. I was like, wait, you can do that? And, uh... Granted, it was tool-assisted, and I had no idea what tool-assisted meant at the time. It's basically just, um, uh, AI playing the game, uh, and doing it on a level that is unrealistic for a human being. Um, but sometimes, uh, tool-assisted runs will show off things that is- are- things that are possible to do by human beings. And one of those is jumping next to those spikes, uh, Let's go ahead and use Woodman here, and I'm going to wait until Airman gets close to me. I'm going to try to just jump over these if I can. One, two, three, four. Boom. But yeah, there are, uh, you know, some, some tool-assisted runs that show off things that humans can actually do, and I just sat here one day on Twitch, I think many, many years ago now, and just trying it, and uh, I was able to get it. I was like, whoa, that's really awesome. And uh, it's another thing I love about this game, is there's so many little, like, uh, subtle mechanics that you can take advantage of that would never seem obvious, and, you know, you can go your entire life not knowing about them, which I went most of my life not knowing you can jump next to those spikes, take advantage of the, uh, large, uh, hitboxes on, on Mega Man and the platforms, and, uh, yeah, just have a good time. You know, just experiment with the game. I, I love it when games can be sort of uh, sandboxes that you can you can just play with. Um, I don't like it as much when games are extremely rigid, but um, I, I love it when games have flexibility. They have a lot of different subtle mechanics that, again, you can you, you might not just not even know about, but when you learn about them, it's just it takes it allows you to take the game to a whole other level that a lot of games just won't allow you to do you know that flexibility is uh honestly critical in my opinion for games to to um have longevity if you have a game that forces you to play the exact same way every single time you play it you're gonna get bored of it and uh, unless it's got like a banging soundtrack or something like that uh you're not gonna want to come back to it very often, but a game like Mega Man 2, like, you could- I could come back to this game probably, like, any day, and I would be perfectly okay with it, because it's just so much fun. So many different ways to play it, so many little subtle mechanics. You know, Mega Man, Super Mario Brothers, uh, you know, the original Castlevania, Ninja Gaiden on NES, they're all very much like that, where they have their own little sandbox kind of elements, you know, some more than others. Mega Man 2 obviously has way more than Castlevania or Ninja Gaiden, but even those games with their varying mechanics, uh, and, you know, Ninja Gaiden's wall climbing, for instance, really lets you just, you know, kind of try to get to anywhere you can. Um, you know, it's that, you know, it's little virtual sandboxes, and it's, it's great. So, we're still rocking Metal Man's weapon here. Just taking our time. I probably should have gotten that, it's not a big deal. Uh, I am not going to be using this weapon on the boss fight. I will switch over to Airman's weapon. And sometimes I like to just jump up here. It speeds up the, uh, the ladder climb a little bit. Uh, that is one thing they did in later Mega Man games. They actually sped up uh, how fast uh, you climb ladders. That was a nice quality of life improvement. I think in Mega Man 3, I think that was the one to uh, really improve ladder climbing. 
I don't mind the ladder climb speed in this. I actually kind of like how it's a little slow. Uh, allows you to sort of take in the environment. But also, it's, uh, you know, I feel like the, uh, the areas were designed uh, around this slower ladder speed. So it's not really all that painful to me. Like this section, you need to you need to scale up vertically, and you need to avoid the birds, or you need to deal with the birds somehow. And Metal Man's actually a great way to deal with these birds. All right, let's actually see what items I have. Um, my assist items. So I have two and three. Uh, so two is what we want. We're gonna grab this energy tank, jump on the number two right there, and then jump on it again. I'm gonna come up this way because there's uh, an item up top here. Yep, extra life. Switch back over to Metal Man. These guys like to hop wherever you are on the screen. One of the other great things about the Mega Man games in general, and I think I explain this every time I get to this part whenever I do a Mega Man 2 video, is the fact that uh, you can just sit here and grind out on these guys. There is no time limit in the Mega Man games. And so you can try to get all your energy back, both health and weapon energy. Uh, item drops, I believe, are pretty much random in this game. I don't know what the programming is uh, behind it, but I'm, I'm going to assume they're random. Um, but, you know, if you sit there long enough, grinding out long enough, you will get all your health back and all your weapon energy back. So, uh, Crash Man here is interesting. Uh, every time you fire, he jumps. So you want to kind of lead your shot into where he's going to go when you fire. So he's gonna, ideally, you, you wanna shoot and then have him just jump straight into your shot. Okay, so we have uh, Quick Man and Heat Man. It doesn't really matter which one we do first at this point. Um, so let's just cycle around and, oh, that's right. It actually does let me put on, uh, you know, put the cursor on these black boxes. <laughs> All right, never mind. that's not gonna work. Let's just do Heat Man first. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're gonna have to do both of them anyway. And then we're on to uh, Dr. Wily's castle. So that Dr. Wily is the big bad guy in this game. And uh, we have to go to his castle afterwards. Great set of levels there, although they can be uh, a little challenging. But yeah, I love the, uh, again, visual flourishes here. Just for one, the color palette in this level is really nice. But look at these, uh, these columns. There's like little shadows that... Uh, you know, you can see above them. That's actually something I never really noticed on my CRTs back in the day. Um, but also the the tinier bricks in the middle. You know, it's a uh, and they're darker. It um, you know, it's it's like a depth effect, which is really cool. It's just really clever. And now we have our disappearing blocks, which is something you know, it's it's a <laughs> it's either a love it or hate it mechanic for some people. So ideally what you want to do is, you know, just watch these patterns and then just try to position Mega Man at the right time. So in this case, it's sit on this block and then jump at the right time. Just like that. Metal Man is just a, a great weapon here too because all these uh, enemies are coming out. And what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to come over here. And we're going to use the number two. And hope I don't get knocked off by a block. And no, they're having a hard time catching up with me. Alright, so that that's basically a one-time use item. Uh, well, <laughs> right now it's a one-time use item. Uh, because there is no more weapon energy for me to pick up. So my number two is pretty much done. If I die, um, my weapon energy does not come back if I die. Um, I have to get a game over for it to all come back. So, uh, if I go back to that checkpoint because I die or something like that, then, um, I'm gonna have to do that whole block section manually, which is, uh, really rough for a lot of people. It's, it's, a uh, one of the tougher sections in the original six Mega Man games. And the Mega Man series got, in my opinion, it got a lot more difficult, uh, later on with, like, Mega Man 7 and Mega Man 8. They are, uh, way harder than any of the, uh, classic Megas on NES. But of the uh, the original six, uh, I'd say that Heat Man platforming section is one of the tougher parts of the first six Mega Man games. Honestly, Mega Man 2 is an interesting one because overall I think the game is actually pretty easy. Um, but it has a couple of moments that are just really mean 
compared to other Mega Man games on the console. Uh, for one, the uh, some of the areas in Dr. Wily's castle can just be mean, especially the uh, well, like the second to last boss fight or something like that, uh, where you're basically shooting turrets on walls, but you have to use a specific special weapon, and it's possible to run out of that weapon energy if you don't do it right, and then have to intentionally get a game over so you can get your weapon energy back. It's it's kind of cruel. But when you know what to do, it's it's not too bad. Um, but it's it's really frustrating if you're trying to learn this game for the first time. If you don't manage your weapon energy properly on that specific boss, it's you just get you get screwed over, and it's just not not cool. So here's item number three. It actually goes up against walls, just like that. Pretty useful. And uh, I'm trying to grab all the extra lives I can because I don't really trust myself. I mean, I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> I don't even think I've died yet, have I? Um, but that might actually change here, because we have these fire beams, which kill you instantly. I'm gonna go to the right here. I think there might be another extra life. So normally I would have gotten killed by that, but I was able to use invincibility frames to just go right through it. And again, we're still using Metal Man. Man, my hands are really stiff today, unfortunately. Um, a lot of times when I play Mega Man, like, one of the things I love doing in this series is just button mashing accurately. It's very fun and a very satisfying mechanic to me. You know, but I'm, I'm struggling to actually get that down today. This is actually the first video game I played all day, and we're actually recording this pretty early morning. And being that uh, it's actually the very end of October as I record this, um, temperatures have dropped a lot in my area, especially uh, early morning. Let's see if we can get this extra life. Oh, nice! That is really satisfying if you can get that. It's it's pretty tough to get that. And we're just gonna drop straight down. As long as you keep moving and you're not like bumping your head uh, against blocks and stuff like that, uh, you're pretty much fine. I always forget if Airman does anything against these guys. Not a whole lot. I'm really not a fan of these enemies. These are probably some of my least favorite Mega Man enemies, honestly, because it's like it just feels like it's impossible to avoid taking damage. So, with that, let's go ahead and uh, burn an E-Tank. Looks like you get a maximum of four. And what we're going to do is, uh, we're gonna have some fun here. We're gonna do, uh, you just use my main shot to start. And then we're gonna lock him into place. We're gonna freeze him in place for the second half of his health bar. Now, Quick Man has a very erratic patterns and is very, very difficult to deal with. But one of the more satisfying fights to do with just your pea shooter and there we go. Just let him sit, look all cool and, and, and whatnot. And then he just disappears. <laughs> One thing I love about Mega Man 2 as well, and this is not something you saw uh, a lot in the later Mega Man games, is unique boss arenas. From Mega Man 3 and on, most of the bosses basically had just flat floors. Um, which is really a bummer. I I, I love like Flashman stage uh, uh, boss. I I love Quick Man's um, because it's not completely flat. And then I love uh, Bubble Man as well because he's got the water physics and like the way his patterns work. Uh, it just works really well with the water physics in there, and it's just a really fun fight. There's a reason that Mega Man 2 is considered to be one of the best in the series. If honestly, if not the best. Um, because there's just so much variety. You know, some of the uh, later Mega Man games became uh, a little homogenized. You know, like a, like the flat arena thing. Um, but Mega Man 2 just, you know, again, it just has great variety. Every boss feels, you know, pretty different. All their patterns are, are quite different as well, actually, now that I think about it. Whereas you get into, like, Mega Man 5 and 6 territory, and as much as I like those games, um, you know, their bosses in particular feel really homogenized. Um, you know, they don't, they don't really feel special, but Mega Man 2 is special. It's such a, uh, expertly crafted game. Alright, let's, uh... So, Dr. Wily's Castle is actually pretty interesting. It's interesting because, uh, your weapon energy does not refill between levels. And so it's actually important for me to utilize my, um... Sorry, I'm blanking out here. 
that's okay. Usually happens by the 30-minute uh, mark when I do these videos. Yeah, we're actually 30 minutes on the dime, basically. Um, but because my weapon energy does not refill, I really want to get my, my item energy back up because I have to use my special items, my one, two, and three, throughout this castle. It's pretty much mandatory. You can also sit at the top of this staircase right here and actually uh, hit this guy from a distance. There we go. Those guys were in Mega Man 1, but they were green. And uh, they had a totally different pattern in Mega Man 1. They were very different. That is actually one other thing I like about this game, is that they, they took some of the old enemies and changed them up a little bit. We're gonna use number one right here. Just like that. Can I hit it? I can hit it. Woo! That was a little risky, but we got it. Yeah, so if you end up dying at this boss for some reason, uh, you need to try to grind out for more weapon energy so you don't end up running out of, say, number one. Number one is required for that section. I don't even think it's possible to get it with number two. Uh, what I'm going to do here is actually use, uh, let's do Quick Man for this boss. And this is a really cool, uh, really cool boss fight. It's just a classic boss fight. It's pretty iconic when it comes to NES games. But it does turn into an auto-scroller, one of the very few sections in this game that auto-scrolls. And you can tell it's kicked in because the frame rate just kind of smooths out. <laughs> the blocks, like, become really solid. And what we have to do is hit him in the face. And he likes to shoot projectiles. And you really want to try to knock it knocks off because you can fall to your doom. Whew, got him. So I actually got hit on the top block and I intentionally held to the right to drop down to the rightmost block because uh, I knew if I didn't, I would just fall straight down I would probably end up dying. That is actually probably one of the scarier boss fights in, I'd say almost all of Mega Man because those platforms are tiny and it's very easy to take a hit from his fireballs. So, all right, Wily stage two. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, use, our, use this energy on our number one. Switch over to Metal Man. And we're going to use number two, right here. And we're going to take it all the way across the screen. And we're all, all the way to the other side of the arena. Look at those, like, fans spinning up top. So cool. Alright, E-Tank. Which is actually good, because we ended up using one earlier. And this will give us some, uh, weapon energy back. For our item number two. Alright, switch back over to Metal Man. And I'm going to just, uh, just drop all the way down here. I don't need any of those items. Oh, that could have been bad. Oh, that was close. <laughs> yeah, the farther you drop, uh, the faster you you drop. So, and I'm going to use Woodman right here, just to get rid of these. Now, this is a great spot to grind out for weapon energy, but I don't need any of it. I'm just going to just kind of cut my way through here. Had no idea leaves were so powerful. Oh, and then again, they're probably robotic leaves. So, you know, when we were kids, we I think we always thought, like, why are leaves doing damage? But we were too dumb to know that everything is mechanical and robotic in this world. So, <laughs> they're probably really, really hard leaves. So, you know, if someone chucked, like, metallic leaves at me, you know, they would probably hurt. Uh, I kind of wanted that health, but you know what? I'm just going to use an E-Tank. I mean, why not? Alright, switch back over to Metal Man, and this is going to be our boss fight. So a bunch of blocks just come out from the, the sides, and you just they just combine into these enemies, and then you just kill them. And that's it. Nothing special here. I still like the boss fight, though. You know, it doesn't take too long allows you to take advantage of Metal Man's weapon. You know, with its multi-direction... directional firing. These guys do hit pretty hard, though. Not gonna lie. Alright, there we go. There's a similar boss in Mega Man 3. Uh, on Wily Stage 1, you have to, you're in a similar small arena, and uh, this thing drops out these water turtles, and you just kill the water turtles, and every time you kill one, the life bar drops. So, similar mechanic to the Wily Stage 2 boss here. 
All right, this is where Wily's castle starts to show some teeth. Uh, this is probably where some people start having some issues with this place. Uh, let's actually... Do I really need anything here? Uh, I do need item number two and three. Let's go ahead and grab this uh, energy then. And switch back to Metal Man. But more water! Dirty water! Disgusting looking water. Yeah, a little, little nice little visual touch there. With, uh, you know, when Mega Man goes in and out of the water, it actually makes a little sound and an animation. Again, selling the uh, the whole water effect. It's just great stuff. Now we have to be really careful here because again, the faster you fall, or the farther you fall, the faster you drop. So you gotta watch out for these black spikes. Uh, spikes in Mega Man games almost universally always kill you instantly. Uh, even those tiny little black ones there. So you gotta be really careful. Gonna be a couple of these guys here. They're a little hard to avoid. But, as you see, you can get underneath their arc and actually uh, hit them without taking damage. And what I want to do here is actually use Quick Man's weapon. And I'm going to wait until he gets uh, about halfway, uh, you know, into the screen. His platform will, will activate, and then you can jump on it and then smack him in the face. Yeah, Quick Man is just really good against him. It was doing two blocks of health for every hit, I believe. So that was, that was nice. Alright, and I believe this is the Wily stage where we really need to conserve our uh, weapon energy. Or a specific uh, weapon. And our items, our, our special items. So let's actually see if we can... Uh, yeah, let's do item number three, probably not going to need it, and I am going to be using Metal Man here quite a bit, so we will replenish Meg uh, Metal Man's weapon. Yeah, this is, honestly, I think when people play this, and if, when, you know, when they play Mega Man 2 for the first time, uh, they play this level and they're, they really struggle with it. They end up getting game overs and, you know, again, just really struggling with it. Now, there are illusory floors in this where you can actually end up falling through the floor, and one of them is right there. So that's also a slight, slightly frustrating aspect to this level. And there's one right there, so I, I know I have to jump over that, and there we go. We got it. Now this one up here, I used to know the exact pattern. Uh, I don't quite remember it anymore, and I don't trust myself, so I'm going to use number two, and just go right across it, just like that. Whoa! That was odd. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Um, and I could go for that E-Tank. Wow, I have ten lives. Man. That's nice. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had ten lives in this game. We still haven't died yet. Uh, we've gotten close, but I, you know, I've used energy tanks twice. You know, they're tools to be used. You know, there's no shame in using your E-Tanks. That's what they're there for. Don't be stubborn when you're playing these games. Unless you're just trying to be a perfectionist and, you know, get like a one life clear with no item refills or anything like that. But really, if you're just trying to go through the game and just beat the game for the first time, or just beat the game for your hundredth time, just for fun, because you love this game like I do, <laughs> um, use the E-Tanks. They're just tools in your arsenal. Mega Man 2, it gives you the tools, and it's up to you to use those tools. And kind of like on a, on a similar, uh, whoa, 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 I did not mean to do that. Uh, kind of on a similar topic, actually, you know, I play a lot of shoot 'em ups as you guys know. Uh, there's a mechanic in a lot of shooters, they are called bombs. Um, stubborn younger me would never use bombs, because I thought it was a scrub thing to do. Only, only bad players, uh, use bombs in shoot 'em ups. But, no, it's a tool in your arsenal. It's meant to be used. Yeah, it might penalize you if, say, there's a scoring system that relies around those bombs, but that's for you to figure out. Not every game has the same rules. Some games actually promote bomb usage. They might give you more points or make your life easier. You know, make survival easier, which means uh, more points in the long run. So, 
It took me a while to get out of that mindset, actually. Um, alright, let's see what I want to do here. I actually kind of want to see if I can freeze these guys in place. Boom! Ha 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 ha. Now, unfortunately, I have to contend with these guys. I'm gonna go ahead and just tank some damage here. Not really a big deal. Tank that damage, I don't really care that much. And let's go ahead and switch back to Metal Man. So, if I die, I think I, I start at that, um... You know, where, where I drop down to. I think that's where the checkpoint is. But, um... There's, like, basically no way to grind out for weapon energy. So if you screw this up, uh, you're gonna have to get a game over. Uh, so let's make sure we don't screw this up, because I don't want to kill myself ten times. Alright, so we're gonna use item number one, and we are going to try to jump up here. And we have to use Crash Man's weapon. Tons of slowdown here, unfortunately. Woo! All right. So a couple different ways we can do this. I think it's possible to get to hit both of those with one shot. Uh, I'm not going to try it. I'm going to conserve my energy. And let's go ahead and use an energy tank. And I'm going to switch back over to item number one. And I'm going to take the scenic route. I am not going to risk wasting my ammo. And there we go. Awesome. First try. Um, that actually started to scare me because, uh, I have ten lives, and if I messed that up, I would have had to kill myself ten times. That would have taken, like, ten minutes in and of itself. <laughs> it would have been, like, a minute for each death. Um, that actually wouldn't have taken a minute, because those big machines, uh, you know, the big walkers, they do, like, almost half your health bar. So, alright, classic Mega Man boss refights. So, very much like before, what we're gonna do is just use the boss weaknesses. Uh, Heat Man, he actually- he likes to go wherever you are on the screen. Now, how soon he does that is random. Sometimes he'll wait a while, but he basically, once he starts going, he'll go to wherever you are at that given moment when he starts moving. Alright, so let's switch over to our standard peace shooter. Alright, and go back to Woodman again. One, two. Nice! Not too bad. I want to say something dumb like Heatman's weapon works really well against him. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Nice. I love that. <laughs> it actually kind of makes it actually makes sense because fire burns wood and that's exactly what happened um, all right there we go again just we're just going around counterclockwise all right we're gonna do it just like we did earlier. You know, let's just go ahead and just stick it out with this. It's actually faster than waiting for, uh, Flashman's weapon. Alright. Continuing around. <laughs> Mega Man's not having any of these guys. He's just like, I want in and out. I just want in and out. Mega Man's like, I want to get this done. <laughs> it's lunchtime. I'm hungry. <laughs> Let me out of here. <laughs> He's just ripping through everybody. <laughs> oh man, I just another that's just another thing I love about this game. It's like a lot of people complain about the boss refights in these games, but it's like, dude, like Mega Man 2, they did the boss fights just right because of how the weaknesses work. The weaknesses in later Mega Man games, they're not as like they're not as good as they are in this game. And so the boss refights take so much longer. But that took like a minute and a half, I think, to go through all eight bosses again. It's amazing! This game is so amazing! <laughs> I'm getting all giddy talking about this this stupid game. <laughs> but it's amazing! It's an amazing game. Alright, we're gonna switch over to Quick Man's Weapon. 
Now, these balls are really hard to deal with. Uh, the hitboxes are just... bad. I don't like the hitboxes on these things. I always take lots of damage from them. And if I remember correctly, this fight on the Genesis Wily Wars collection is, like, ridiculously difficult. Um, because of how much damage they do and, and all the other mechanical changes they made in that version of this game. It's a fun novelty. I don't recommend it over this. This is also a nice little trick. You can actually, every time you go to your main menu, Mega Man sort of like, sort of like teleports back in. Um, and you can actually use that as manipulation to uh, control your on-screen positioning. This is the main part of the game where it's the most useful, because if you can get ahead of these guys, you can just run to the right and you'll never take a hit. Otherwise, if you do take a hit, you know, they do a lot of damage. So, this kind of makes your life a lot easier. Alright, and so, we have to use Bubble Man on this form of Wily. And this is actually a clone Wily, it's not actually Dr. Wily. As we will see in uh, about a minute or so, or less. Alright. And he basically just does like a figure eight around the screen. Now you don't want to touch him. He actually does a ton of damage. And this is another one of those situations where if you run out of ammo, um, you'll basically have to get a game over in order to replenish your ammo. God, man, I love this game so much. It's just so creative through and through. And again, there's just, it's, there's a reason why this game is so well revered when it comes to 8-bit titles. It's just an amazing, amazing game. Well, yeah, that was a one life clear. Actually, normally in Mega Man 2, I think I usually die at least once or twice. You know, maybe I'll die at the Dragon Boss, maybe I'll die on, uh, you know, trying to do like the moving platforms, not moving platforms, um, the disappearing platforms. You know, I'll try to do those manually, and, and I'll die, but... That was solid, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, it's probably one of my better Mega Man 2 runs, honestly, on this channel. Granted, uh, when I play this game, especially on YouTube, uh, I, I typically just use the Buster for the whole playthrough. It's just how I, I like to play Mega Man. It requires a little more skill, um, and so it's, it's a little more uh, mechanically satisfying for me. But I absolutely love using the sub weapons in this game and experimenting and stuff like that and just ripping and ripping and tearing through enemies as, as if Mega Man is actually Doom Guy in disguise. <laughs> so again, that's just the flexibility of this series. You know, doing the talking. It's just there's so many different ways to play this game, and I'm still discovering new ways to play a lot of these Mega Man games. Well over 30 years later, it's it's quite crazy actually. So. But yeah, guys, that is Mega Man 2. I hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough. I enjoyed playing through it again. And uh, yeah, all this month, I, I plan on doing Mega Man stuff. So yeah, I'm not sure what Mega Man I will do next, but you can rest assured I will most likely cover all the NES games. I'm not sure if I'll do all the NES games in quick play form. Uh, some of them I might relegate to live streams because they are a little bit longer. Uh, like Mega Man 5 and 6, you know, they can be over an hour long. Same with Mega Man 3. Um, maybe I'll just combine them all into singular, like a singular live stream or something like that. I mean, I might end up just doing, hmm. Yeah, see, that's a tough one. There are some Mega Man games I want to do, like uh, some of the X series. Like, I have to relegate to live streams because they're like two and a half to three hours long, uh, if not longer. Like Mega Man X5 and Mega Man X6 and, and stuff like that, so... But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to just doing a lot of Mega Man this month. Uh, one of my goals is to finally beat Mega Man 10. Uh, I've never beaten Mega Man 10 before. And then also try to do Mega Man 11. Uh, I finished that game when it first came out many years ago. And I've barely played it since. Um, so, uh, hopefully I can relearn that game uh, from the ground up and get decent at it again. And then... Uh, probably do a live stream here, because I don't remember how long it is exactly. But, uh, yeah, so stay tuned for more Mega Man action all this month, guys. I'll probably have a couple of other random streams, um, as well, that aren't Mega Man related, but for the most part, I'm gonna be focusing on Mega Man this month. I really liked focusing on Castlevania all last month, and, uh, I haven't binged out on Mega Man in a while, and, uh, so we're gonna do that 
all this month, so hopefully you guys uh, will be looking forward to that. Yeah, I don't really have much else to say, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching again. Hopefully you enjoyed this revisitation of Mega Man 2. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. For everyone else already sub, thanks for your usual support. And until the next one, take it easy.